In this video, we are going to talk about the Blackfriars Theatre, Shakespeare's other theatre. Let's go. G'day, Paul from Small Crown Productions. Welcome to this video. This video is part of a series of 100 videos that we're doing for the 100 Days of Shakespeare event. So if you're not sure what that is and you're curious about what that is, then I'll pop a link up here so you can um, click over to that a little bit later and check it out. That will actually be the very first video that I did in this series explaining what the whole concept of the project is. But tonight we want to look at the Blackfriars Theatre and dig into that just a little bit. So the Blackfriars Theatre was actually built in a monastery, the Blackfriars Monastery. Monastery. It was a Dominican monastery that was founded in around 1255 and then over time they built such a reputation in the city they actually had quite a bit of sway. Now they were considered an ancient religious precinct and so they gave them certain rights. Now one of the things they actually managed to do was get the city walls moved so that the wall kind of contained the walls of the um, the monastery, and so they were able to close their gates on two sides in the city wall, uh, as I understand it. So, really fascinating. They were quite a influential monastery at the early stages, which of course died off over time. The Blackfriars Theatre that we think about in regards to Shakespeare is actually the second Blackfriars Theatre. So I'm not going to talk about the first Blackfriars Theatre, but there was a theatre set up within the monastery sometime earlier uh, that didn't last a whole lot of time. Um, but, but it is of note that the Blackfriars Theatre that I'm talking about is actually the second Blackfriars Theatre, uh, basically built within the same kind of um, precinct. So uh, the Blackfriars Theatre was... Um, basically bought by James Burbage in 1596. Now, James Burbage, uh, as you may or may not know, built the first amphitheatre theatre in um, London, actually just outside of London. So playgoing and theatre going had you know, become quite popular and uh, he saw an opportunity to actually create a larger venue. He went out to Shoreditch because they had to be outside the city limits and built the theatre. And that could house, you know, based on the numbers from the Globe, which we know was roughly the same size, um, close to three, three and a half thousand people. So there was definitely a lot of opportunity. And that lease, uh, that was built on leased land, and that lease was actually due to expire around this same time. So he, seeing an opportunity, bought the rights to the upper freighter of this monastery. Now, Size-wise, this was about 100 foot long and about 46 foot wide, and it was in that space that he built the theatre. Still constructed in a similar kind of style to the amphitheatres, multiple levels of seating, um, a similar sort of groundling structure in the front of it so that they could pack a lot of people in. And again, you would pay different prices for the different levels of seating based on where you were. So it still had similar kind of Lord's boxes up and around the stage. Now, the, the monastery was actually in a very influential part of town. So the people that lived in the precinct around it were quite wealthy, quite influential. Burbage obviously saw this as an opportunity because there had been play going in indoor theatres before this, um, but they were mostly boy players who were playing in those theatres. And there's another video that I'm working on at the moment about the boy players. So once that's done, I'll make sure I come back and link it up in here for you. Um, but uh, Burbage saw an opportunity to get the adult players back inside the city limits. So he bought this theatre. There's a whole bunch of politics that happened around that as well, which I won't go into, but just know that it wasn't easy. <laughs> he actually requested a permit for it and was denied and it took some time. But um, basically, he managed to buy for £600 the rights to the upper freighter of the monastery and set out to build the theatre, the indoor theatre. What he did not anticipate was the pushback from the local people. So you've got all these wealthy, influential people, a lot of them you know, working in you know, politics of the time, um, who, who, you know, probably in the Privy Council, who did not want the rowdy, boisterous, bad reputation that was being built up around the big public playhouses brought into where they live. This was their part of town. It was an upper market part of town. And they didn't want all the bear baiters and the prostitutes and the pickpockets and the drunks that were associated with the public theatres 
coming into their part of town. And so they pushed back and they pushed back hard. And it actually meant that Burbage couldn't put anybody in that theatre for over two years. Now, James Burbage died uh, not too long after purchasing it. So he, he died a couple of months before the lease for the theatre uh, was due. And so his boys took on the lease and obviously the ownership of the theatre. But there was a, obviously a bit of a struggle over there with the lease renewal. Um, Burbage had tied up pretty much all his cash in buying Blackfriars. And so the boys didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of cash and they were running out because they couldn't perform here and there was issues with the theatre. So they were the Lord Chamberlain's men were actually performing in some of the other theatres. They couldn't play in the theatre. And so, as we know, when Giles Allen, the leaseholder of the theatre property, uh, was away, they hired, the two boys hired a uh, builder to strip the theatre and take its wood and stored the wood so that later on they could build the globe. Now, Blackfriars sat empty for a couple of years until 1599 when they were able to get one of the boy players groups to start performing in the theatre. Elizabeth dies in 1603 and James I takes the throne. Now, very soon after that, he took on full patronage of the Lord Chamberlain's men, changed their name to the King's men, and that started opening a few more doors for them. So the boy players played in there quite regularly until the King's men went in and took over from about 1608, 1609. And then they played in there fairly regularly, quite consistently, and it became quite a popular theatre right up until 1642 when all theatre was stopped because of the onset of the English Civil War. So at that point, um, it sat empty for a long time. There was no theatre. And in 1655, the theatre was actually demolished. So a really important part of the King's Men's portfolio to have that second income stream, that consistent income stream through the winter that a lot of other theatres didn't have. But of course, Burbage once again set up this theatre and it sprang a whole bunch of follow-on theatres, indoor theatres just like it, uh, when the restrictions really started to lift. So there you go, a bit of information about the Blackfriars Theatre. If you got something out of this, give the video a like. Uh, it would be great if you subscribe to the channel. And of course, uh, feel free to share these with anyone else that you know that might be interested. It'd be great if you could help pay it forward for somebody else. Um, hang around, watch a couple more videos and get to know a little bit more about Shakespeare, his life, his times, or have a look at some of the other fun stuff we've got on the channel. I'll see you there.